Marley Studios in Burbank, California, it's The Learning Show. On the show tonight, e-learning guru, Elliot Maisie. And now, your host, Lee Gregory. Thank you. Thanks for coming out. All right. Alchemists and engineers of workplace development and all who drink at the fount of your knowledge, I welcome you to The Learning Show. I'm your host, Lee Gregory. Thank you. Thank you. And for some reason, I'm feeling even smarter today than I did yesterday. In fact, I'm feeling brighter than Einstein at a light bulb convention. <laughs> you know why? Like Darren told you, we've got e-learning guru Elliot Maisie on the show tonight. Yes, correct. Now look, we've got miles of training turf to go before we sleep, so let's hop to it, my lanterns of learning. Are you ready to smart something? Okay, then let's get to it. But first, fresh news. Not quite breaking, but still quite fresh. <laughs> my top two stories. Games for learning are serious business. Gamified, gameful, game-based, game-centric, game-adjacent, call it what you will, but the features that make games fun are exactly what need to be incorporated into the workplace training. At least that's what Sebastian Detterding, head of Gameful Research Network and editor of the Gameful World, wrote in the July issue of TND Magazine. Yeah. That's what I call a career path. Can you imagine how much fun it would be to work in a field where people have fun all day? You know, hey, what do you do for a living? Well, I work in the gaming industry. Wow, so what do you guys do all day? Well, we work on game theory, game play, game themes and the like. So essentially you play games all day. Pretty much. <laughs> Correct. Some of the game features that are beneficial for learners are accrual grading. In other words, everything you do in games gets you further. There's also visible status. Games give you constant feedback through points, progress bars, and the like. There's also nested challenge-based learning tasks. Good games are structured in nested sets of goals with increasing complexity. And what about player choice? Good games give players multiple routes to the ultimate goal. And of course, there's freedom to fail. In games like life, failure is the central route to learning and success. And there's competition and cooperation. When properly designed, competition is good for team learning. Now here at Train Division, we think game-based learning or gameful learning is a fascinating subject, and we'll be bringing you more on the subject in future episodes. But for now, think about how gameful design can be used to engage your learners. Remember, learners are people, people like games, games are fun, so fun is good for the learning experience. My next story is one of motivational prestidigitation and managerial hocus pocus. This business mainstay is at the heart of progress and inertia deep within the global business landscape and its ability to organize genius or thwart the greatest initiatives is legion. Yes, you guessed it. We're talking about manager <laughs> meetings. A recent survey conducted by Training Magazine and the Ken Blanchard companies revealed the truth behind what employees need from management with regards to meetings. The survey was in-depth, and time constraints prevent the probing look this survey deserves, but we can tell you this. 89% of people want to meet their managers on at least a monthly basis. 65% want to meet for 30 to 60 minutes when they meet together with their manager. And when it comes to meeting topics like goal setting, goal review, performance feedback, and support conversations, employees want more face time and discussion than they're getting. Hmm, I'm intrigued. 
<laughs> this subject demands a bit more learning show heat and light. So we're going to circle back to this one. But to get the deets in the meantime, check out the July-August edition of Training Magazine. Till then, the takeaway is that managers need to make more time for their people. So let's try to make that happen, okay? Excellent. All right. Okay. Next up, our special ASTD segment with the one and only Elliot Maisie, everybody. For those in the learning world who don't know who he is, Elliot is acknowledged as the first analyst to use the term e-learning. And he's advocated for a sane deployment of learning and collaboration technology as a means of supporting the effectiveness and profitability of enterprises. He's an internationally recognized futurist, analyst, researcher, and organizer on critical workplace topics. And he's served as an advisor to the Department of Defense and on the White House Advisory Council on Expanding Learning Opportunities. The man's got mad skills, folks. So here's my interview with the one and only Elliot Mazin. Welcome to The Learning Show, Elliot. Well, thank you, Lee. It's an honor to be here. Oh, it's an honor to have you. Now, I've heard in certain circles that you are the guy that coined the phrase e-learning. Well, I either get praised or cursed. Probably <laughs> did more to promote the term or at least to accelerate it. But, uh, yeah, I think I was probably in the room when <laughs> e-learning was applied to the, the world of how workers were going to learn their jobs in the okay. future. Okay, okay. So uh, tell us a little bit about that. So you were, was it like, did it happen in a meeting and all of a sudden, bang, e-learning? What, what happened? It's a great question, Lee. Um, we actually were at a meeting at IBM, and okay. this was back in the mid-1990s when e-business was sort of the buzzword. Okay. And I remember we were talking about, well, there'll be e-business, e-commerce, you know, uh, email. What about thinking about e-learning? And it was a great conversation, and, and we were talking about what e-learning might be. And ironically, I said to IBM, well, you know, you just coined or, or got the trademark e-business. Why don't you just go and figure out and add e-learning? And they were excited till it went to the, their brand person and said, no, that'll never stick. <laughs> so I said, OK, yeah. I'll, I'll go out and use it. But what's interesting, Lee, is that uh, I love having a conversation about what the E stands for. So what, what do you think the E stood for well, back in 1990s? Maybe was it, uh, did it have anything to do with electronic? Ah, did it? it did. Okay. It did. But okay. that's the interesting element because that was only maybe the, the appetizer. You know, okay. we All said, right. okay, it's electronic, meaning you could take a course and it could be delivered first over the network and then we, the internet, Al Gore gave us the internet. So yeah, right. we could go do <laughs> exactly. That. But actually the E, we had a whiteboard in that room and I wish okay. we had taken a picture, but nobody had cell phones back then. And the E stood for some other things. And so even the people watching us can think of what the E stood for. Hmm. So electronic, yes, but E stood for everywhere, okay. every time, everyone. Wow. Effective, efficient, engaging, in, invigorating. And wow. the intriguing element is, I must say, even though I get credit with it, we had a lot of years where um, e-learning was e-asleep. <laughs> Meaning, you know, you would go take an e-learning program and it would, be, it would be better than Somonix. You know, you'd be asleep because we forgot the other E's. Ah, you know, yes. it was a, if all it is is delivering a page of content and then you take a little test, that's e-ook, you know. Right. Didn't I tell you? Cool and insightful. Now, Elliot's an innovator and he's always got his eye on what's coming next. So let's check back in to see what he has to say. But, right. But if you really want it evigorating, then you have to figure out how do you engage everyone, yes. everywhere, every time, and, and the like. And now what we're seeing, literally in about the last 24 months, mm -hmm. even what we're doing here right now, sure. that e-learning is getting with somebody and having a conversation that could go everywhere. You yes, know, absolutely. Uh, and so we're, we're expanding correct. out the definition of what e-learning is, and it's evaporating, I hope, in an ironic way. Mm -hmm. I'm hoping we just talk about learning. 
Ah. In other words, I'm almost ready to say bye bye e, mm -hmm. because we don't. I don't say anyone. Oh, I'm going to do an e-commerce activity and buy some shoes. Right. Say, oh, I'm right. going to go and buy, buy some, some shoes. shoes. Yeah. Exactly. Or I'll send a note. I'm not. I'm going to send an e note. Right. So I'm almost ready to make the assumption that we'll always use electronics. We'll always use face to face. Sure. And maybe to some point the e will go away. But if it stays, let's have it be for those other e's, uh, not yes. just for electronics. Well, that's fantastic. So that's what you see as the future. Right. So we're going to get rid of that E somehow so that we never think of the actual place where it's taking place because right. it will take place everywhere. Everywhere. For everyone okay. at every time and, you know, in every manner, in every fashion. Well, that is fantastic. Well, I got one more question for you. Are you enjoying yourself here? Oh, I'm having a great time. Uh, the nice part is I'm here as a learner. Uh, I'm, ah. not, I'm not teaching. I'm not leading anything. I literally came to be a learner to have conversations with people. And probably the biggest learning I've had while I'm here is that people seem also really interested in how we personalize learning. You know, yes. How do we give Lee okay. what he needs today, not what he might need a week from now or right. a year from now? So we've had some right. wonderful conversations okay. about that. So are you, uh, I've heard a couple of names floating around about that just in time and all that. So what would you call that type uh, of learning? Well, I, think think about now? I think it's personalized. I think it's personalized. I think okay. it's about giving a personal, in the same way, you know, I personalize how I want to look at a screen or I personalize if I'm using okay. Facebook or I personalize my bank account. I think we're going to personalize it. learning as well. You Got know. it. So does that mean that the learning will be more in the hands of the learner? Yes. Okay. Or in the co-hands of the, the learner. Co learn you know, it's okay. kind of co co-produced. Mm -hmm. Sure. Uh, Absolutely. And and I think the learner will, will spend more of her energy getting what she needs when she needs it, including the fact that some things she doesn't need to learn, she just needs to know how to locate. Like, I, I don't know where my friends live anymore, but I know how to get them on my GPS. <laughs> yeah. and as long as I know how to exactly. boot up the GPS, I'm cool. You know? Right. And, yeah. Well, I think that's fantastic. All right. Remember that. Learning everywhere. Personalized learning. You heard it right here from Elliot Maisie on The Learning Show. Thank you so Thank much. Thank you much, Lee. Appreciate Thank it. Thank you. All right. Elliot Maisie, everybody. Yeah. Okay. And you know what time it is now? It's time for shout outs and follow backs. Our first shout out goes to Bill Lay of Lightform Productions for being the effects wizard that he is and for helping us out in ways too numerous to recount. Next shout out is to Darren Hines of Real Mix and Smart Post Sound for keeping the sound sweet. Shout out to Tracy Busa for her continued support and friendship. And we also send a shout out to the rest of the extended Train of Vision crew that helped make the show possible. And last but not least, our continued thanks to ASTD and the people of training for their informative articles, press releases, and for being great friends of The Learning Show. All right. Now, here we go with the Twitter followers. All of you great people have been following Train of Vision. Now, there's been so many of you that the numbers are too large to report on the show now. So followbacks are going out to each and every one of you wonderful people. Thank you so much for following us, and we're going to follow back. All right. I hear the music. I hear it. T-Bird, you got to dance. T-Bird, do it. Yeah. Okay. Love that little bird. Save the date, everybody. And here's what's up for the latest conferences and trade shows in the industry. August 26th through the 28th, eLearning's Enterprise Learning Conference and Expo at the Anaheim Convention Center in Anaheim, California. September 17th through the 19th, Training Magazine's Online Learning Conference 2013 at McCormick Place Lakeside Center in Chicago, Illinois. September 25th, ASTD's Government Workforce Conference in Washington, D.C. October 23rd through the 25th, eLearning Guild's DevLearn 2013 Conference and Expo at the Aria Resort and Casino in Las Vegas, Nevada. November 3rd through the 6th, Elliot Maisie's Learning 2013 at Disney's Coronado Springs Convention Center in Orlando, Florida with keynote speech by none other 
than former Secretary of State Hillary Rodham Clinton. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. Well, that's our show, good people. I know, so soon, but I must dash. Apparently, the old Gulfstream 550 is blocking traffic out there. <laughs> really? Okay. Anyway, don't miss the next show. We've got the dynamic CEO of Net Dimensions on the show, Mr. Jay Shaw. Yes, that's it. That's right. Now, don't forget to follow us on Twitter, like us on Facebook, link up on LinkedIn, and thanks so much for watching. Stay smart and don't stop learning.